So when you get into the car, this is what you're faced with. Sometimes the uh, the map is the full um, height of the of the of the screen. Up the top here is the normal control. So this is your sat nav screen. This is your function screen. This is your air conditioning along the bottom. If you want to go to car controls, you simply hit the car con the controls button. And up here, you'll notice you've got sport. Whoops, sorry. You've got sport and ludicrous to give you max battery power. Uh, range mode. I don't know what that means. Regenerative braking is standard. Creep, move slowly forward, then brake when the pedal is released. And these are your comfort settings for steering and suspension. Some of the typical does, for example, the uh, sound system. Well, let's do the suspension. You, what, what, yeah. what, what, have I, what are my choices here? Uh, you've got, uh, well, this is when you're going, obviously. Um, automatic lowering adjust speed. So that's uh, set to lower itself at 160 kilometers an hour. Okay. But I'm, I'm not more going aerodynamic, to... more stable yeah. if you do that. Yep. Uh, turn off all power to the vehicle in case of emergency. Okay. So well, if you don't... roll the car. I, yeah. don't, I can't think why we would want to do that. Well, in an accident. That's right. Mm. Display modes. So you can adjust the brightness of your screens. Mm. These are the trips that have been done in the car. The cold weather stuff. So all of the seats have heating and the steering wheel and the windscreen has also got defrosting and heating and what have you. This is fine. Your driving modes and your suspension modes. Uh, the interesting thing is that the vents are still working now because you don't need the car to be on it no, can have well, the, the air car, conditioning can be going that, no the car is in fact on well yes yeah, that's right yeah. yes so these are how you unlock your various um your thing we were looking for those buttons before of mm. course there are no buttons this is to open your charge port the rear boot the electric rear hatch mm. uh, lock and unlock the doors and this is the front trunk this is the one that you can unlock from the key or from this button and the same goes for the trunk here so then if we want to go back you can go back like so now you might notice that up here there is a little lock and that's for doors that's to lock and unlock the the doors so that's always present regardless of what screen there is here you don't have to go back into the other screen that we were just talking about mm. um, sat nav input is very easy. You can also use this just like you would uh, an iPad or an iPhone or an Android device. You can pinch, you can squeeze. So this shows where we are at the moment. We're on this, there's the Pacific Ocean there. There's the Royal National Park, the road that we were on before. And we can zoom in and see exactly where we are. Right in Isn't on the amazing? cemetery. Right in on the cemetery. This proves of course that it's not live footage because we're not sitting there there's just an arrow yes uh, the issue about this is that it's connected to the internet permanently it is. and so it gets immediate updates uh, rather than having to uh, load them that's right here's our uh, uh, electricity usage okay so, so we could have this up all the time and that could uh, show us how far we, we have to go now this is showing 438 kilometers at the moment but it says projected range 158 kilometers that's because you have just done a fair amount of acceleration yeah I would say so hmm. and I, I find this graph very difficult to read you know I, I don't think that really helps me very much like it shows you in at any point in time if you kept driving like that that's how many kilometers you would have whereas what you really want is to see in the most economical mode if you really got stuck how far you go so although this says 438 kilometers on the dashboard it's saying 340 there overall this shows alan that a you're a hoon mm. and b you're on and off the accelerator yeah well because it's an electric car yes and it was a twisty road and it was a twisty road mm. uh, but if you went can you go back to the other screen the previous screen what to do this to, one? on this one yeah, yeah 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 so here is where you get regenerative braking isn't yes, it yes correct now correct. that can be quite powerful can't it it's it can slow you down quite a lot if if you want it to be as soon as you're off the accelerator in the city 
you almost never need to touch the brake. Now when the car's going up on the screen, it'll show you when the brake lights are on. So even if your foot isn't on the brake pedal, the brake lights will come off if you come off, uh, sorry, will turn on if you come off the accelerator. Hmm. And that's to show people that are behind you that you are in fact slowing stop, down. Slowing down, yeah. Hmm. Because if it didn't do that, you'd slow to a stop without it, the brake lights ever coming on. Hmm. So uh, along here, this also shows you know, the various modes of the camera. That's the phone. calendar so and this requires the tesla mobile app which the um, journalists obviously don't get from that app you can control certain aspects of your car you can turn the air conditioning on before you get into it you can uh, tell it to pre-cool you can um, locate your car you can tell when it needs a service yes this car still does need a service uh, they'll look at um, the, the the batteries and so forth obviously there's nothing engine wise that needs to be done this takes you into navigation and this is your music. Now I can also press the button and get the uh, little um, glove, box. glove box. To very, get... very small glove box. Uh, but I don't need to have a manual, do I? No, the manual's in here. Also, the other button here is the hazard flasher just below the carbon fibre effect dash. Carbon fibre, David, <laughs> dash. Uh, so now what were we saying? Uh, so I can get the uh, manual. Can I can get oh, information yes. about the manual yes, up there? Can. Now I think that was in controls. Uh, settings manual. So up here is the owner's manual, and this is just an electronic version of those awful paper things mm. that no one ever reads. So I think people would actually use, it. for example, using the touch screen. There you go. How easy is that? And this touch screen has got to be, what, 14 inches? 15 inches? That's that's 9, yep, yep, plus that much, yeah. Yep. And Here's the specifications of the car, vehicle loading dimensions and weights. Oh, Look at that. That's the stuff that you'd normally have to go to the website to find. Vehicle loading. I think this is just absolutely brilliant. This shows you where the VIN is, etc, etc. Is that or is that not brilliant? Of course, you can tell this is American. It's spelt tyres with an I. I hate paper manuals. I hate the fact yeah. that you go, you look up one section, it says go and look up another. You look up that and it says go and look up another. Yeah. And you, if you've lost where you are, you've got no idea. This seems to just take you. Ultimately, I hope there's a search function. Rest, the, rest that there. There you go. Uh, a search function. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe, well, maybe, I, but we, maybe not yet. Yeah, well, because all of that, uh, of course, because this is connected to 3G up here, that's the car's 3G, not my 3G. That's all of the connection. You can see my phone's connected there. There's media. It's connected for streaming. Um, get out of that so now you've got um, uh, various other subsystems you can go and look at there's also let's get out of that maintenance I can feel vibrations through the wheel sorry if I sound I'm being put off it's because it's um, sounding very strange um, now the most people have a bit of fear about charging this shows you all of the charging things that you need to know about your car um, battery status charging instructions and so forth so if you'd gone to a supercharger this shows you how to release it do you remember <laughs> yesterday we couldn't get the damn thing out that's because there's a button on the top that unless you knew was there you wouldn't be able to find touch controls charge board on the top good god Now, is that or is that not genius? And because it's on such a big screen, yes. this is actually easy to read. I could probably use that without my glasses. I initially looked at this and thought, gee, that's almost overkill with the screen. But not but once you start using it. Yes. Once you start using it, you use every bit of the screen. The other thing is, with podgy fingers, I find that a, a little screen, I'm, I'm almost having to steady my hand and, and touch it to make sure that it works. 
That's right. And what you find with this is, is down in, in certain parts of this screen, there are the icons are smaller. So like across the top, for example, those icons are quite small. Hmm. And yet you can still get to them easily. So I can still get to, uh, to, and so this is what this car is. It's a P100D. It's got 296 kilometers on it. That's hmm. the odometer. That's how many kilometers this car's traveled. Oh. Not many. No. Um, well, you don't have to worry about an oil change. Uh, so that we did ask that lady yesterday when we went to the uh, Tesla showroom uh, exactly what it was that they service when they bring the car in for a service. I should have asked what the um, what the range was. Sitting in this car. I think with my laptop on there, I could probably write a review yeah. more efficiently I think than so. if I was sitting on the web. Here's an interesting thing, David. Mm. Because this car has no engine, mm. it has no heat. So all of the heat that it gets in winter has to come through electric coils. Yes. Can't come from water. Mm. So there's all of this palaver. So this big grey area is the battery. And what did you say? There were 6,000 batteries or something? 6,900. I, I, that was one figure from one of the uh, Teslas they had. There's the rear motor. Where's the front motor? Front motor, front motor, dual motor vehicles, only one. Here we go, up here. Hmm. So, is there anything else you want to look at? We don't want to look at the carbon fibre dash anymore. Uh, we don't want to look at the, because uh, we won't be using the sound probably, the Alcantara I think looks very nice and there's also Alcantara on the ceiling. Nice. But come over here. How simple is this? Some of those steering wheels are terribly cluttered. There's only a scroll for up and down, which alters the temperature on the, the uh, yard. Hang on, let me go over and film that try that now so that's the driver's thing going up and down now this is your oh, I was going to say that, no you'll want to come down this Sorry, is the it's now counting me down I don't know is that and the lights flashing to know okay um, this is if we had smart cruise, cruise control fitted it would be on this button here and that's the distance control the only kind of analog thing I can find in this whole car. That's the distance between you and the car in front. Uh, indicators and washers. Of course, there's no um, uh, auto wipers in this car at the moment. And over on the other side is gears. So that's, I'm going to put my foot on the brake. That's forward gear. That's reverse, and pushing this button in puts the car into park and activates the handbrake. And you'll notice, David, that there are no steering wheel paddles because there are no gears. Mm. 